Hola. Hi. Bienvenidas a Super Mamas. Super Mamas. This is Falina. And this is Bricia. We're moms and sisters. I have two beautiful girls. Lisa who's four and Sabina who's one. And I have a handsome baby boy, Eduardo Santiago. And we welcome you to the Super Mama Sisterhood. We're here to help one another, inspire one another, and support each other through the ups and downs of motherhood. I hope you guys enjoy the show. Okay. Listas? Here we go. Hi, Super Mamas. This is Bricia. And this week in the podcast, we have our little sister here with us, Elizabeth Lopez. Oh my God, we had so much fun recording this episode. Um, we are going to learn so much about her, and she's going to teach us a thing or two about learning how to trust her children. It's an incredible show, one of my favorites, and I hope you guys enjoy it. What is cracking? What's going on, ladies? What's going on? I feel young today. I'm probably going to throw a lot of slang today. <laughs> <laughs> Go. <laughs> Go. I'm still in the Beyonce mood. I know. That was like the best night of my life. <laughs> That's why I told my husband. I was like, last night. Another day we married. Nothing <laughs> like that. I was like, last night was the best <laughs> night of my life. And then he looked at me like, what? I was like, I mean, like, you know what I mean. <laughs> This I year. mean, like, as a concert wise, <laughs> concert wise, concert wise, that was the best concert <laughs> I've ever been to in my life. It was. It was so much better than the one we went before. Oh, t- I know, right? It was just. It, it was just. It was very. I think because it was. It, I mean, it was my by far my favorite Beyonce concert I have ever attended. Right. I think I have gone to every single one of her concerts. This one was just way too lit. It was. It was too much. It was. Uh, what a friend of mine was like it's just very empowering for females <laughs> <laughs> it was just it was just it was just like the best it was just the best i don't even know if you guys are able to catch her touring her, her world tour go this br- episode is brought to you by beyonce, beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> no you guys should really go yeah. see her no it's like you know I know there's a lot of people that don't like her, but like the show, the show, just like the production, her as an artist, she's like an athlete. She's, she just, from beginning to end, the energy is like a hundred percent. I mean, you're right. I think like you've made a great point how you said that she's like an athlete. Sometimes when I watch basketball games or Mm -hmm. football games or baseball games, I'm like, who are these people? (laughs) Like okay, sometimes when I would watch like Kobe play, for example, right. when Kobe was like at his prime, I used to go to a lot of Laker games back then, and I would just there's like they were dancing on the court, yeah, and, and I was like, how do these people do this? Like, are you an alien? <laughs> like you, I mean, are, are it's obviously months, it's, not human. It's like two days after the concert, and you're still hurting for yeah. from going to the concert, and she also already <laughs> doing another concert, and I I was looking at her tour dates, and I'm I like. Know. At what point do you just chill? <laughs> she doesn't. Like the next day. She oh. grinds. Oh, she works. No, she grinds Monday, Monday through, through Friday, Friday and works she, Friday to Sunday. That's right. That's what her song says. <laughs> but I, 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 I was like, oh my God. Like I was, you guys, I was so dead Sunday. <laughs> so the concert was Saturday. Let's talk about the differences on our Sunday. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. The difference between your Sunday and my Sunday. So the concert was Saturday and we went with our little sisters. It was the three of us. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we got, I got a little turn. <laughs> I'm going to admit it. And you're allowed. It was Beyonce. It, it was it was Beyonce. Okay? It was, it was so I was fun. just like, I, I, if any of you guys would have seen me, I didn't even recognize myself. She was I unrecognizable. Mean, I was. She was about to get her ass kicked. <laughs> I was. I was telling you, I feel like I would like transported out of my body i think i was so euphoric because we were all it, it was just like it, it was just crazy and the energy right like, yeah. like sixty thousand people around you just just singing and jumping yes. and dancing and it was yeah, just insane. It, it was just insane but after the concert was over <laughs> that was the fun part <laughs> after the concert was over you guys 
my sister and I and my other sister, <laughs> we walked. Okay, Elizabeth and I did the math. Uh huh. We walked legit five miles. Dude. Probably legit. Dude, legit. It was like crazy. Okay. So we took we. We took. We decided to take an Uber mm -hmm. because last time we took a car and we took forever to get out of the road. It took us like an hour and a half to get out of the road. So Rose we're like, no, 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 we're not gonna take a car this time. We're gonna take an Uber. It's gonna be easy. They're gonna pick us up, and we're just gonna be there, you know. Wrong. <laughs> it was the worst. It we, was the worst experience. The worst of experience my life. ever. Like it was so badly coordinated it like was there was people sleeping in the grass around us i was about to fall asleep <laughs> yes. in the grass and you didn't let me i know because i had to go home I but there like, was i was like you guys i was gonna <laughs> slip here sleep here i'll see you tomorrow morning like <laughs> no, i don't care i couldn't leave you because people people, people were, were sleeping. sleeping in the grass because you, we, we, they, we were, they, they sent us to an asset designated area for uber quote unquote and there was no reception there was no reception and there were ubers there they're like we can't let you in because there's no reception we have to go where we have reception and we're like this makes no sense we were offering I, people I, money i was like take this cash <laughs> you guys i was offering like like a good amount of cash right and they wouldn't take nope, me they wouldn't take us people were crying because they were trying to get out of there yeah, and they couldn't we couldn't <laughs> you know thank god we found a hot dog chick on the way we had a hot dog <laughs> and then i threw it up later it was really bad but it was horrible. Trying to get out of the Super Bowl was horrible. Like of the Super Bowl, the Rose Super Bowl, <laughs> <laughs> the Rose Bowl. It was horrible. It was a horrible. I woke experience. up the next day and my entire body was aching. Like I, like what are what are, what are these muscles called? Your quads. I don't even know. Because I guess tu chamorro. Your, no, chamorro is this one. <laughs> oh, okay. Chamorro are the whatever these. <laughs> no, these are my quads here, in, like the front, like long muscles. Yeah. I I feel like I weight lifted like two hundred pounds a hundred times. Yeah, it was crazy. Saturday, like I, I I can't even sit down and take a poop. <laughs> like it hurts to sit on the toilet. Like if I sit on the toilet, I have to like put my hand down. Like I'm so happy in the restaurant we have that bar and I use like the accessible the handicap yeah. bathroom because it has a bar, so I hold on to it and sit down. When I go up and down the stairs in my house, I have oh to go sideways and I go one leg at a time. I am not exaggerating how much. I mean, my we walked so much. Are hurting. At the end of the night, we had to like leave. I premises. wish I had a Fitbit. <laughs> we, so we I had to have known how yeah. much we actually walked. We left the premises of the roadway and we walked until like this abandoned road. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember walking. I, I think at some point I was just like a zombie. <laughs> And my I was like, let's do this. Let's do this. I have to get home to my kids. I got home at 2.20 in the morning. I told my husband that story. He was like, that's a real super mama, Paulina, <laughs> going home to her kids. I'm like, honey, what are you trying to say about me? I was trying to sleep on the grass. I I was like, I have to go home. Tita was like, let's just stay. I'm like, no, I got to go see my kids. They're going to like, the thing was that I knew that Sunday it wasn't going to be like, oh, I'm going to stay in bed. You know, no, my kids wake up at the same time. I was like, I need to get some sleep. Like, I need to go. I got home like at 2.20 and I had like a short, it was like a romper. It was like a short. You look good, by the you. way. I had a short romper and like a vest. So I was shaking. I was shaking in the in the taxi. I I realized this morning that I hit my head and I was <laughs> yeah. like, I was, it was really bad. I got home and I got in bed with my husband and I was like, just hug me, please, because I am so cold. I thought I was going to come down with a fever. And then, yeah, yesterday my kids woke up at exactly the same time. <laughs> no... <laughs> They did not go to the Beyonce concert. They did not. I was like, oh, my God, are you serious? I still had to go to church. I still had to, like, you know, be a mom all Sunday. I was Snapchatting yesterday, like, at 830. I was like, guys, I am dead. Like, I was dead. And I Snapchatted the whole concert, by the way. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. people. I know some of you were like, what the hell? But I just couldn't help the it. The next morning, Tita and I were in bed. Because Tita came <laughs> over. Tita Elizabeth, our sister, came she over. She went to a party afterwards. Oh, okay. How did she go to a party? Okay, how did she go to a party afterwards? I was just done. I was just done. And this girl was like, oh, I'm going to the party. She came over the next day. She came over the next day. She got to my house, I think, like, at 8 in the morning, 9 in the morning. She's like, I went to bed at 5 a.m. I'm like, 5 a.m.? That was like four hours ago. What do you mean you went to bed? You mean you haven't slept since last night? 
Oh, man. So my okay and i'm gonna sound like such a horrible mother but when i was when i was in the concert my baby actually was throwing up and she was he was throwing up too like me Aww. like mommy he threw up because he's in really sick in his stomach right um so my husband was up with him from 11 p.m to 1 a.m so when i got home my husband had just gone down too then he had to get up and take care of you <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> no so then when i woke up the next day he we, i went we woke up the baby woke up my husband took care of the baby and then put the baby back down at 9 a.m um, because he was just so tired my baby w went to sleep from 9 a.m to 12 30 <gasps> what? in the middle of like in the morning because You're he hadn't so slept lucky. and i was like oh my baby thank you <laughs> i love you you're like being good to mom i'm just like and i laid in bed no. with elizabeth until like 12 30 p.m <laughs> My daughters were like, mommy, mommy, leche, cereal, let's go to church. I was like, okay, let's just do this. But the whole morning, <laughs> Tita and I were looking through Beyonce's like videos, <laughs> trying so to figure bad. out like, we're like, look how close this person was. <laughs> look at her ass jiggle in this video. <laughs> so many things, so many realizations at that concert. Oh my God. No, it was, it <clears> was <throat> honestly like one of the best experiences of my life. Yeah. And I'm glad we got to do it together with Tita because it was, it was fun. Speaking of Tita. 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 Our Elizabeth. guest. <laughs> She's like, no, <laughs> your mic is off. <laughs> Elizabeth is here, you guys. I think one of our mamas called and said that they wanted to hear from her little sister. They had some questions for her. Um, so she's here in the studio with us today. She's she not is. a mom yet. And honestly, apparently we have non-mom listeners out there. Right. I, I hear more and more from them. I'm like, you're not a mom <laughs> and you listen to the well, show. I kind of, I kind of, I kind of was a Elizabeth's mom for a while back when she was like a tiny kid. Yeah. So, so you know. All right, you guys. So when we come back, we have my little sister here with us, Elizabeth Lopez, aka Tita. Tita, ASAP Tit. We'll be right back. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> hey, Tita, you just gotta. Eat and it. we're back. What up, Chili's? What's up, everyone? <laughs> La Chili Pili. Can you tell Chill everybody why, why that is your, your nickname, La Chili? I have a lot of nicknames in this family. But <laughs> you're, well, you're the only one who has a nickname. I have multiple nicknames. <laughs> <laughs> you're the only one with a nickname in, the, in family. Yeah. Like true, true, yeah. Like true, like legit. Let's, let's see my, my repertoire. <laughs> Go. I have Tita. I have ASAP Tit. <laughs> tit. <laughs> Chill. Chill Pill. <laughs> And borrachilis. <laughs> borrachilis? Yeah. La chilis. La chilis. La chilis. Chill. La chili peel. And any variation from you. And any variation of And ASAP T is just because her name is Tita. So that's her OG nickname is Tita. Yeah. But there's it, all, there, there's apparently there's like a crew of rappers like ASAP <laughs> Rocky, ASAP Fur, ASAP Fur. And she loves the ASAP crew. So then we call her, yeah. so we called her ASAP T. <laughs> Uh, and a lot of people like are it. like, "How come her? La how, why did it? Why do you guys call her Tita?" And I was like, "Huh? I have no. Oh, you don't know why? Oh, because this is what this is apparently the story. Okay, tell me that when I was younger, I c like when they asked me what my name was, I said Tita. Oh wait, no, wait, wait. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> that was a terrible story. <laughs> <laughs> that made no sense at all. <laughs> no, okay. So we were, a lot of people in Oaxaca call me Betina. Right. So, Betina. but I couldn't say that when I was younger. So I said Tita <laughs> instead of Betina. And so that just stuck. Sure, Tita. Okay. I think that's, that's what mom said. <laughs> What else? <laughs> I thought it was like because people were like, oh, Elizabetita, like Chiquita, you know, in Mexico, Elizabetita. So then you just cut it to Tita. No, I, I, have my I think they just better. made my name a lot longer. Like, <laughs> Elizabeth. Is, like, el I thought it was Tita from, um, from, uh, like water for like, chocolate. Like, like water for chocolate. Oh, <laughs> or Tito's top four. Four. <laughs> <laughs> four one of six. Tito's top four of four. I remember Tito. I remember Tito. What's up, tits? Hey. Oh, so I'm recovering. I know. It's just, <laughs> how do you do it? I don't know. How did you go to a party after I the have, concert? I don't. I really regretted that decision as soon as I got <laughs> to the party. <laughs> you had no sleep. Number one. 
That's the worst. Zero sleep. That's the worst. Zero yeah. sleep. I, I slept sitting. I When I watched the party, everyone was like partying. And I went to some, I went into a room and just sat down on the chair. And I passed <laughs> out for like however long. And I woke up trembling. <laughs> trembling and i walked down people at 5 a.m people were still going i was like what's happening <laughs> like how are you guys still alive so we have this group it's called team traffic shout out team traffic <laughs> um and I don't like think we team traffic all listen to no, I don't, I really don't think <laughs> team traffic whatever shout out mitzi because i know mitzi's listening um but um we like to all like listen to music together, go to concerts together, just like have a good time together. And then three or like there's a couple of guys in the group that are DJs. And so they wanted to do like a Yuma DJ like set. Yuma is from like stems from Coachella. There's a Yuma tent that's like all deep house. And so they didn't want to do it at like at someone's house. So they got someone someone's house and they go right on until 5 a.m. It's like I have no <laughs> idea what you just said. Okay. I have no. You so speak, are you were you speaking English right there? Was that English you spoke? What a difference! Like what a Ten difference! Years. Ten years. Tell me, her and I are only four years apart. What are, <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, well, sure. Elizabeth and I are eleven years apart. Yeah. So it's like a huge difference, right? Like even like. From when I was her age and her now, like, okay, the things well, that she does. But to mom and dad, okay. To mom, okay, yeah, to mom and dad. I think that's why, you know, we wanted to bring her in because we wanted to, like, the difference. Even between us as siblings, like, the things that she does now with mom and dad and the things, like, that I used to do with mom and dad are, like, Com- abysmal. The things that <laughs> you admit to doing the, to the mom and dad. The things that I would get away with are, and the things that she... She and she tells them what what she's doing. Like she doesn't even have to hide. Like it. you told mom when you first had sex. No, I didn't. You didn't. I no. thought you did. Oh, this is how mom found out I had sex. <laughs> this is the story. Okay. Um, I remember I wanted to buy some tampons, and she was like, "No, Elizabeth, do not buy tampons. <laughs> only buy tampons. <laughs> Hold on, only buy tampons after you've had sex." <laughs> see what I'm see? And then I was see? just like, "Okay." And then I saw, all of a sudden I started wearing tampons and she was just like, notice. And I was like, yeah. Jobs, Mike. <laughs> but see, it, was, like, it was a good advice, too, because it was, didn't hurt. Yeah. And then like, <laughs> <laughs> which one, the tampon or the sex? No, the tampon. Oh. <laughs> but see, like, you know, I had a child and dad still forwarded a movie. I mean, he still does that. I think that's really, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Tell I just me. remember. Go say it. I just because I watched this movie the other day. I don't know why, but it's called the Chris Rock movie. I think I love my wife. Oh, uh-huh. I went to the movies and saw that with mom and dad, <laughs> and it was the worst <laughs> movie ever, ever to see with why? mom and dad. I don't know why. <laughs> Why'd I don't you? know why we would go see that. Why would you even? And then he was just like looking over and he was just like, cover your eyes, cover your eyes, cover your eyes. I'm like, ah. He told you to cover your eyes? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, let's go back to mom telling you not to wear a tampon. Oh, yeah. Until after you had sex. Okay. Because you're the only one in this room that knows how to wear a tampon. <laughs> right. Where did you learn? At what point? From the you- box. <laughs> How is it that we don't get it? I, from the box. It's so easy. I did exactly what the box <laughs> said. And it was just like... Did you, have you read the box, Rizia? I, I don't think... I, I think I throw the box away because I, I, I packed them nicely <laughs> underneath my... I mean, I was scared. I, was, I didn't know where or how it worked. And then I did it. And I was like, this is the best invention ever. <laughs> You're like, I'm so glad I'm using it now. <laughs> Yet, Molly and I are still on the pad train. We cannot. We cannot. <laughs> I can't do that. What about your friends? Do all your friends wear tampons? Yeah. Molly and I think we're the only people no, in no, the no. world. No, no, no. But what about like other things like the Diva Cup and all those new inventions? Um, <laughs> Diva Cup? No. I've never really heard of anyone wearing it. Oh. But I've heard. Uh, we've talked about it. Right. We've talked about it. But we don't We don't really think that's really sanitary. So. <laughs> I okay. mean, I'm sure. I don't know. I just, I wouldn't want to try it. Okay. I don't know. I okay. So then what is the biggest difference? I mean, okay. So then here's some of the things that my list Elizabeth gets away with. Okay. Mm-hmm. One, she had her boyfriend sleep over her house. Yeah. When she was in high school. Mom would make breakfast for them. Yeah. 
Okay. One day, we're like, one day I showed up to the house and Pita nonchalantly was walking down the stairs with her boyfriend. And I'm right? like, uh-huh. uh huh. Excuse me? How, yeah, how the hell did that happen? Okay, number two, another thing, like, what? My mom, you guys, you know, we all love her, but <laughs> my, you know, mom tends to get upset very easily. Very easily. As I do, as as do I, um, as do I. Me too. And my sisters are now living with my parents. Right. She's transitioning into her adult love and uh, adulthood. When are you moving out, by the way? Um, in July. She's like, um, never. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she. So she moved back in with my parents after college, mm-hmm. for, and now she's moving out again. But during that time, she's living with my parents. And I'm like, how is it living with mom and dad now? <laughs> because mom tells me that, like, she gets mad and tries to scream at Tita, and Tita just goes, Mom, chill. <laughs> mom, relax. <laughs> because like, she gets rel- mad over the weirdest things. Like She has I, always, though. But, like, I guess now I'm just like, relax. Like, what's the, like, why would you get so mad? Why would you get so worked up? <laughs> There's no reason. Like, does it work? Yeah. How come it doesn't work with us? I mean, she still kind of yells, <laughs> but then in my mind it works. I'm like, all right, chill. And that's it. That's how I got the name. Or like, chill. sometimes she doesn't come over to sleep. Yeah, but I text them. It's <laughs> okay. I remember that. T- okay, but see, it, it was it was a weird transition because I remember one time Elizabeth called all three of us crying. Because she was like having a meltdown because mom yelled at her over text. Oh yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, over text, <laughs> right? And over she was like, hey, "You guys gotta talk to mom." And I was like, "Why?" She was like, "Because she sent." She was so mad at me, and I was like, "What did she say?" It's like she sent me a text, and I was like laughing my ass yeah. off because I was like, "Mom sent you a text, and you are like calling me to talk to her." I was like. You obviously did not live what I lived, Elizabeth. I was like, I, I wish nothing. I would have gotten a text. I wish. Oh my god, I I used to get the little chirp. Okay, so when I was in uh, college, we when we were oh, yeah, when I was in church. college, I was in college. I was like a grown ass woman. I was like nineteen years old. Legit. You were not that grown, Brisa. Okay, <laughs> in my head I was like, okay, fine. I was nineteen years old, living with my parents, and um, I would be, you know, with my boyfriend, doing whatever. <laughs> One o'clock in the morning, I thought was like so late. Right. And you know, I'm you know saying goodbye, or I'm like you know with my boyfriend in the car, and I would get this chirp with my next day. Chirp, 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 chirp. Like my dad would chirp me in from my next day, oh, and yeah. just like, oh my god, my, my god, dad, I, I have to go back home. Yeah. I have to go back home. That was the worst because you couldn't hide. You couldn't hide it because he was your dad's was voice. Like, like chirp, 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 Brisa. And he wasn't like, Brisa, where are you? It was like, where the fuck are you? Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, yeah, we're going. He's like, you have 20 minutes to get here. And we were like, oh, my God. <laughs> and Elizabeth was just like, whatever. Text, like, Dad, I'm not coming home. Chill. Bye. <laughs> See you later. See you later. <laughs> That's like, it. How? how did that happen? I don't know. He... <laughs> I guess they trust me. <laughs> Maybe. No, you they know trust what? me. I, I don't know. The, I don't. I think the biggest difference, I and I always said it, and I think it's great. I think like Elizabeth and mom and dad have like this very open communication that we didn't. Right. Right. I no, mean, that I, I could tell them things. I you could tell them a lot of things. You can. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I don't. I think back when I was your age, dad was still like a very, very. Um, he was just different you know i couldn't tell him things like i'm, I'm not gonna come over to sleep you yeah, right oh dad my boyfriend's sleeping over <laughs> <laughs> sure i remember one time i had a boyfriend i was in i was in high school and he was oh, he was in my room i was sick and he came to visit me oh, yeah. I, I was sick and he was in my room and he showed up and my boyfriend was in my room you know like <laughs> 7 p.m <laughs> you know like everyone was home but my boyfriend was in my room and then he got so mad at me oh, yeah. and I didn't end up going to prom. <laughs> he didn't let me go to prom. <laughs> oh, so it also had to do with the guy, too. He loved Ryan. I mean, we went to Vegas with my boyfriend. Yeah. At the time. Yeah. Like, it, 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 he was just like crazy. He How was about the so time crazy? when we went, to, we well went to Vegas and Tita had a, like a luxurious suite with oh her my boyfriend. God. With her boyfriend. And her boyfriend. And then we all got like regular rooms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a huge difference, Elizabeth. Yeah. You're very lucky. I know. Um, and then another question that, that some of the moms wanted you to see was like, how did, because you graduated from college, mm-hmm. you went to a great college. USC, uh, fight on. Um, how, so here's the thing, because a lot of moms are like, 
a lot of moms have older older kids mm -hmm. so they're in high school um and they're gonna go to college like number one like how do you recommend like a mom talk to like a, a, a high school kid like how do you like how do you keep them in line so like one you know they make the right decisions in their life in general like you know Just, making the right yeah. decisions staying in school and going to college like how would you talk to your mom about just like keeping it chill keeping it chill um i think definitely open communications like key i mean mom and dad didn't i didn't really have open communication with them when i was in high school but i did with you guys mm -hmm. and just talking about like what's like the most important thing like keeping your grades up but then also like personal life like what's going on in your life like how are you doing like are you having sex like here are the here are the tools for you like here like there's so many options of like birth control condom that's why i really liked my health class in high school because I, i got i learned a lot and just just talking to them about um like what are their goals what do they want to do i mean i didn't when i was in high school i just didn't really i knew i had to get good grades but i didn't know where I wanted to go, where I saw myself. I just knew I had to get good grades because or else mom would get really mad. <laughs> <laughs> like I just knew I had to get that done. And then the whole thing, I went to Dominican. And then when I got to, Dominican is like a university up north that I went for a semester. Then I came back and went to community college for two years. And that's when I really, I had to get the inspiration like from myself and motivation for myself to get out of there because I knew I just didn't want to be there. I knew I had to do something to also just make my family proud of me and do something huge because I remember one thing that um, Brisa said to me one time was like, all right, like I went to Mount St. Mary's, Fernando went to UCSC, Paulina went to a college in in Mexico City like you're the youngest you need to like outdo all of us like I don't care what you do you need to outdo all of us and I was like I said that yeah and I was <laughs> I like I remember I was like yeah like okay I was like all right well and then I went to community college and then I was like well, what can I do I said you know what I'm gonna go try USC and then and I even went to my counselor and they weren't even that much of a help really in yeah school? They were just like, where do you want to go? Like Cal State, Cal St like g they gave me all these Cal State options. I'm like, no, like I want to go to USC. Not that there's nothing wrong with Cal States, but I just envisioned like USC, like it has such like a prestige, reputa like a prestige reputation. And like, I wanted to be a part of that. I'm like, no, like I want to go to USC. They're like, oh, you know, like it's going to be harder work. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Like give me the classes that I need to take. And they just gave me a sheet and that was it. I only went to a counseling appointment once. Oh, really? Yeah. And I was like, okay, all, all I need are these classes. Like, let me just get this done. And so that's what I did. And, now and then I, I remember you getting better grades in community college than you did yeah, in high school. I did. I think it was just like I had more. You had a drive. I had a drive. Yeah. I was working here at the restaurant and 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 studying. And then I just, I just had to, yeah, I just had more, I don't know, what's it called? Organization. I had a lot more things on my plate that I could organize a lot better. And I liked it. So, and I really wanted USC. Like really, really wanted it. I know. You and you did and it was it was great because you got like a full scholarship too. Yeah. Not only do you got into USC, but you got a full scholarship. Yeah. Unless you have some secret student loans <laughs> we don't know about. <laughs> no, I mean, I was just I just studied. Like I remember I was I it was one class economics. No one got an A in that class except for me. I remember. I was so happy. Like the first cr test I got was a D, <laughs> and I was crying because I was like, I'm never gonna get US into USC with a D on my transcript. And so I went a bunch of study groups and talked to the professor. Went into office hours, and I was just like, All right, I need an A or at least a B. Like give me a B and I'll be fine. <laughs> But no, I got an A, so that was really exciting. Oh my god. That's but cool. like okay, but when you were in high school so when you were in high school you said you didn't have that like huge sort of open relationship with mom and dad, right? No, not really. So I guess my question is what would you have wanted from a parent at that moment? Or what did you get from from us, from Paulina, me and Fernando that really helped you sort of navigate high school? Because 
I feel like like right now, if like I, I already forgot what it's like to be in high mm-hmm. school. Do you know? And and I just I remember like the hardest years of my life were junior high that I remember. And it's really tough. I kind of being a girl that age, like mm-hmm. 12, 13 sort of time because mm-hmm. you're going through so much your body's changing and then like junior high but like in high school is sort of like when you kind of find your way but yet like you still need to like have sort of like a clear vision of like you have to go to college like don't mess up kind of mm-hmm. situation mm-hmm. but like what what would you have wanted or what did you get that like kind of um like one is communic- like taking interest in like what I'm doing like what do you like to do you know mm-hmm. like for mom and dad and like I didn't really join any clubs but I wish I did but because I just didn't have that freedom I was just always scared like I couldn't like you say like I have so much freedom in high school but I didn't they wouldn't be like you can't go to this party like you can't do this like you can't like you can't see all your fr- like you have to come home right after and so like I just went right home after and and I just did homework i was like in my like room just like me and my tv <laughs> that's where like, the love for tv just happened because I, right, right. I would watch tv all the time and so oh encourage your kids to read more because i didn't read mm-hmm. a lot so definitely reading a lot i don't know, just open communication like getting knowing that your parent trusts you is like a lot it's really, really, it's really a big thing. I just think, like, um, from a parent perspective, I just think, like, at that age, you really, I mean, you want to trust your kid at that age. Yeah. But at that age, like, you are driven by your hormones, your emotions. You know, you're going through so much change that I think also from a parent perspective, it's hard to just let go because it's a lot of a lot of the control, I think, from mom and dad for us. I think it was that they were just scared of, you know, I guess getting pregnant or yeah. like going into drugs or like, or you know, going in like to make a car accident. It's not like it's just always like a disaster. Right. Yeah. And I think. But does that I mean, but that's going to be forever. Like, yeah, I, I, it I happens think, to I me think, now. I think. Yes. Yeah. So I think like what we need to like start today, even with our kids and then they're like hearing Elizabeth back I think I think like I need to do is just trust my kids since now. And it sounds right. so like kind of may not sound as like, well, what do you mean? Trust your kid. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like trust my kid. And, and that's why I also love the Rye approach, because that's sort of like one of the things they t- teach you to respect and trust your child. So trust that your child is going to. For ex- it's something as simple as like when he sits down to eat, like you have to trust him and like, OK, you're going to eat. Not like being there all the time, like, come on, like, do this and do that. You know, like, trust, like, trust him. Do you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, I don't know if I, if I'm coming across. No, yeah, 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 totally. Because I think like as parents, we just want to control every situation for our kids because in our head, we think we're going to make it better and we're going to make them, we're going to save them from whatever. And I think like if we don't start since now, like what's going to stop us? What's like, well, I'll trust him when he's what? When he's 30? I'll trust him when he's 20. I'll trust him when he's 10. Right. Like, at what point are you going to embed the trust if it's not right now? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, you have to trust your kids since the beginning. Right. Since, since like, now we need to start practicing to trust our children because by the time they're six, seven, if they don't trust you then, like, okay, oh, here's one trust example for Rye. So they always teach us that never sneak out on your kid and mm-hmm. your kid never sneak out never like go through the back door because you're not you're afraid they're going to cry that you're gone mm-hmm. if you're leaving tell him okay i'm leaving and i'll be right back I'll, you right. know I'll, i'm leaving but i'll be back so every time i leave the room i tell my kid i'm leaving but i'm gonna be right back mm-hmm. and if he cries he cries i don't go back and say like okay no no i'll stay here with you it's like he has to trust that when I leave and I say I'm going to be back, I'm going to be back. Mm-hmm. I have to trust that whatever I say goes. Because if he doesn't trust me, then how is he going to trust me later? Right. I remember one of her Rye facilitators told me that she had um, a student that was like, that said like, oh, Mia, I don't really trust my mom all that much. But like she was a great mom or something something about like trust. And, and she said, you know, when I was a little girl, she used to tell me she was going to take me to the circus. 
But when we got there, we got to the doctor and I would get <laughs> shots. Yeah. Because if I said she had told me I'm going to take you to the doctor, I would yeah. cry. So sometimes like we like lie to our children about certain things because we don't want to hurt them like mm-hmm. that. We're going to the doctor, but it's, you know, like or the shot's not going to hurt. Like, it's going to hurt. Like, you can tell them, like, it's going to hurt, but you'll feel better after. That makes sense. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, like, totally, totally makes like, sense. Like, I feel like, and, and if we don't start practicing this right now, like, right. at what point are we going to stop that sort of pattern from happening? Right. No, I, I see what you mean because I I notice that with Krista, like, if I tell her we're going to do something, we have to do it. Not that we have to do it, but she's expecting that to happen, and... Sometimes I thought that she would forget, you know, like, oh, she'll forget about it. But then she'd be like, mom, you said we were going to do this. Like, what happened? And then I have to, like, explain to her, oh, you know, this changed or whatever. So that's why I always tell my husband, I'm like, don't tell her we're going to do something that we're not. We have to tell her exactly what's going to happen because at that age, they need to know what's going to happen because that way they'll feel, they'll fear, they will feel secure. Right. Um, they still feeling insecure when all of a sudden you start changing things. And actually this today I received an article from from my uh from Savina's teachers about um um routines and change because you know they're gonna be changing into um some of the kids are going into an older class and things like that. So they're just saying how important it is to keep everything around them the same. If things are gonna change, just to keep ev- try to keep everything around the same because it, they'll f- they feel very unstable at this age. If right, things like change. at home, like yeah, it, they, like so. I it, I think it's true. Like they need to know that if we're gonna take them to school, we'll be back. You know, if we're gonna, you know, because then that's I think that's why a lot of kids cry because parents just like all of a sudden you're there, all of a sudden you disappear. Yeah, or say mm. like oh, you know, daddy's gonna pick you up, or I feel like sometimes sometimes we don't we underestimate mm-hmm. what they can understand right you know like if i drop off my kid i'd be like okay i'm gonna come get you later like i have to go get him because i'm like oh i, I should have said daddy's gonna come get you right you know yeah, yeah so he knows like oh daddy's coming or mommy's coming like he needs like we underestimate their we little do. brains we do i saw that yesterday um because when i when it's kind of like a different subject but kind of goes to the same thing Krista when she was Savina's age I would only give her baby books like just you know little like colors and things like that and that's all I would give her because he was like from ages this and this so now that Savina is exposed to the old to, to Krista's books she doesn't go to the baby books she wants to go to the older books she wants to see the you know the more things and I was like why didn't I give Krista that I thought it was not she wasn't gonna get it Mm-hmm. But we have we underestimate their brains because she is catching everything, and it's because I'm she sees me how I treat Krista, and I don't treat her like a baby baby. Like I just they're all they're both the same, and I realize like I'm like oh my god like I I could have done things different with Krista. I mean she's fine and nothing's gonna happen to her, but yeah. I'm like I underestimated her a lot i understand Krista all the time and she always surprises me like she catches me off guard many times because of that Mm -hmm. so i think we shouldn't we should like you say we should trust them and trust ourselves because i think a lot of it has to do with our own insecurities um like we we try to be like helicopter parents overprotective you know like oh que no se caiga que no se lastime oh my god you know but they're gonna fall and they're gonna break something i broke something you know i think we all like fell at some point but we just want to protect them so much and and take care. And we're taking care of ourselves by that, like our own insecurities and our own failures. Mm-hmm. And we are reflected on our on our kids. And I think we it's a very important pattern to break, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which leads us to our favorite segment, Patterns to Patterns, <laughs> <laughs> where we're going to ask our, our guests, Elizabeth, I hope you're, 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 um, you're prepared with your pattern to pattern. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so we'll be right back, guys. back from our one hour break that we just had (laughs) Uh, and we're back with one of our favorite segments patterns to patterns brought to you by seventh generation and where we ask our guest about a generational pattern that they want to break in their life elizabeth is there a pattern that you want to 
break in your life right now? Yeah, I do. Um, I really want to, I really want to continue or yeah, I continue because I've already really thought about this. Just saying I love you to the people that I love, like my sisters, my brother, my mom and dad, um, my friends, because it's such like a small thing that you always forget to say to people. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important to just remind everyone that's important to you that you love them and how, how grateful you are to have them in your lives. That's a great, that's a great one. Was it last week we had dinner with dad Mm -hmm. and mom and we were talking exactly about that. Like we are still (coughs) having trouble with that ourselves Yeah, Mm -hmm. because it's very easy for us to text each other. I love you. Mm-hmm. But it's hard for us to say it in person. Like, yeah. you know, it's uh, as a family, all of us. Yeah. It's hard. Like, we, we we're ra- not a very affectionate family. No. Like, we are. Like, if you yeah. saw us, like, we, like, you'd be like, what are you talking about? Like, but we're not. Like, and, and this came out because I was listening to my husband talk to mom. Mm-hmm. And I was like, how do you just come say these words? Right. Mm-hmm. Like, I. I mean, I love my dad and like I've written him stuff, but mm-hmm. like for me to sit down and talk to him and like tell him how much like he means like, yeah, I he's made like me cry over text. Like I just, yeah. That he says. yeah, but, that's but what like I'm saying, he would like, never tell me to my face. Right. Exactly. Because it's I don't so easy because I feel like once we start saying those things, like we get choked up yeah, uh-huh. and we can't say them. So that's something that our family has to like break and get over and like work little yeah. by little. Mm-hmm. That's why I took mom for dinner that night and my husband's like, just go and just like talk to her and like, like start that sort of that, that relationship of like just being right. openly loving, mm-hmm. which it's is hard. difficult. It, it, it's a thing us. that, yeah, yeah, it's a thing that we have to work on as a family. We just, you know, I think it's, we, it's awkward, right? To like tell dad all these things like. Yeah, even I mean, uh, even like to, uh, to every, an like, intimate to, place. I yeah. mean, you know, we can like you said like a beautiful speech when you receive that you know, for dad, but would you have said that to him like just if it was just us having dinner? No, probably not. <laughs> also, yeah, and it's hard for me because I I'm the most sentimental and no more than me out of all of you. No, no. no. and I cry all you can the call, time. You can cry right now. I can mo- I can cry right now. <laughs> there was a moment back then I almost cried and I said no. <laughs> like I cry a lot. So yeah. it'll be a lot hard. <laughs> really hard. A lot harder. I know. We, we had a moment at the Beyonce concert oh, and yeah. we both started crying. <laughs> I bawled, bawled and told Brisa how much I loved her. Aww. Yeah. And how much she means to me. <laughs> <laughs> see how we make it into a joke? We just, yeah, we do. It's see how we do jokes. See how we do it? But see how seriously. that happened right now? Like right. that just happened. Like, you're like, and then you make it into a joke to make it less awkward on ourselves. No, we do. That's weird. We yeah. do because that day we were telling dad the same thing. Like, oh my God, daddy. Oh, he was like, you guys don't understand that to, for me to express myself, I have to make it into a joke. And we were like, that's true. We all do that. Like, I think mm-hmm. that's why we make so much fun of each other. Yeah. Because when we're yeah. trying to get real, we're like, no, nah, we nah. can't. So when we start, we start like just making fun of each other. It's our way to say I love you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But that's a pattern that that wants to break. That's great, Tita. It's a really good pattern. Thanks. I commend you and I second you. I third you. I second you. (laughs) I third you. Wait, you were saying that you wanted to add something about trust. Yeah. Um, And so because you, so one of the biggest things is having trust because then your kid, your child, your teenager will just come to you and tell you like it, like the truth. Mm -hmm. Because then if you're not open to listen to them and like really know and not judge them or not criticize them for what they did or how they feel then they'd come back to you next time they have a problem or next time like something great happens to them or next time there's a huge moment in their lives that they want to share to them share with you but they're just like scared right no so that, that happened to me that's like the biggest lot. thing like just trust and yeah. like be open be honest and don't criticize right i remember when elizabeth started just sharing things with me at first i felt awkward i was like oh my god what am i supposed to do with this information (laughs) because it was you know Uh. i was i was never used to that but then i you know i was just like okay yeah you know that's cool and then next time she would tell me the next and then we would just have come we we still have conversation Mm -hmm. like that so i was like i think i learned a lot from my relationship with with elizabeth to just be you know i think you were my my 
you got me open to listen to those kind of things. I was like, oh my God, do you tell this to mom? <laughs> like, oh my God, you know? And um, so I think, I think you're right. I think you're right. It was kind of like, it was hard on my part of the beginning to see you as a woman and like as an individual because I always saw you like a, as my little sister, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, but I think it's, I think we're, we're there. We're getting there. Yeah. I still don't see her as a woman. She's still little tits to me. <laughs> <laughs> you still only see her little tits. <laughs> um, well, thank you guys. And again, this segment was brought to you by 7th Generation. For more information on 7th Generation products, please visit 7thGeneration.com. Another one of the products that I'm loving from 7th Generation, I think I spoke about them, about this one before, but I just want to re-talk about it because I absolutely love it. Was it the detergent with the lavender scent, mm. Paulina, that you posted on Instagram? I told you. Especially after this week where I had like my baby threw up in the morning <laughs> at night. Not, not the Beyonce concert day. But like three days before, right. he threw up at nighttime, and then when I, and then we had to like wash all the sheets mm -hmm. at nighttime. Then we put him down to sleep. He finally slept. And when I came home, when I went back into his room, Paulina, when I got out of my room, the hallway just smelled because he had massive like diarrhea. Oh yeah, you told me. But like I had to throw away his PJs. Mm -hmm. I was like, I can't wash these. Like. So his sheets, I mean, I'm not going to throw away his sheets, obviously, <laughs> but I washed them mm -hmm. with that detergent. And I was like, oh, my God, like using that detergent actually like really helped oh, yeah. me. I love that smell. Because love that smell. now like there was some like not that it was like an air freshener for the room, <laughs> but like it helped. You yeah, know what I no, mean? Definitely. Definitely. So clean sheets always help. You know, they leave that smell in yeah, your room. Yeah. So, so seventh good. generation, you guys, seventh generation dot com. You can also find a link to their website on our show notes on supermamaspodcast.com. We'll be right back with our super mama pick or tip of the week. And we're back. We are back with uh, my sister's favorite segment, the Supermama Pick or Tip of the Week. <laughs> I, have, have, I have a few. Me too. I have a few, but, but I'm gonna save them. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna save too. them because every time I get to this segment, I'm like, what am I gonna talk <laughs> about? But like, so I'm gonna I only give you guys products. one. I got some I got new products that I'm trying on right now, so I'll let you guys know. No, but I I got some new things on on Amazon that I am absolutely <laughs> loving. So. um do you want to go first, Polina? You look very anxious to share. <laughs> no, I, I've been, I, I, you know, I always, every time I'm, every morning when I put on my deodorant, I'm like, I have to share this. And then I forget. <gasps> mm -hmm. <laughs> so we all here in this room have a huge issue with odor. <laughs> I don't. What are you talking about? You don't? Okay. Brisa and I. Yeah. And more when, after I was pregnant, my, um, my armpits, um, got really dark really really dark and it was just such a huge issue for me for a long time so last year when i went to yosemite before i went to yosemite we stopped at whole foods and i was like i should try like a natural deodorant and i picked uh one that is called earth science i kid you not i tried it for i washed my armpits really well and then i started using it sometimes i don't use deodorant for two days what and it i'm like oh okay cool like you know and before i would have to use deodorant about three or four times a day oh, wow. a yeah. day it was so bad and it's all natural and it smells like lavender <laughs> <laughs> i right now have the rosemary mint um but i had the lavender because they, they ran out of that one but they have really good products my husband uses it too he was using like my husband uses it too <laughs> my husband was using clinical clinical Clinically, yeah, clinical strength clinical strength because he you know it was because he worked in the kitchen so i was like you can't do that it's a lot of chemicals under your arm so he started using that he loves it we all love it i think i if, use that in baking soda yes guys stop using chemicals under your armpit mm -hmm. you absorb everything that's really bad use a natural deodorant i use a different deodorant that i'll share next week mm -hmm. uh, but I used that one it was great um, and right. baking soda made a huge difference huge me. difference and it cleared my armpits what 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 I should try it um Elizabeth yes um so I don't know if everyone knows but I recently went on a Euro trip 
You did. Oh, you did. And you took six weeks to Europe. Six, yep, six weeks to Europe all by by myself. It's incredible. So one of my tips of the week or tips of life, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is Acep tips life for tip for life? Um, just to allow your kids to travel, like when they're in high school or when they're in college. Really encourage them to study abroad mm -hmm. if we're if we're in like that time. Um, because it really opened up my eyes to like other things, other people, uh, got me talking to a lot of different people around the world, got different perspectives. And I think that's really important, um, for everyone. So just to travel personally. That's cool. I want yeah. I wish nice. I would And you travel on a budget too. Don't. Yeah. I, I travel on a budget. Think, like people like think that like, oh no, it's so expensive. But like no, you, no. you, yeah. I went to hostels, Airbnbs, just did everything like really. Yeah, which I want to give Elizabeth credit because we paid for her plane ticket, but everything else she took care of herself. Yeah. yeah. So that was really good. Really proud of you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you. Grown ass woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was was pretty freaking cool. Sorry. <laughs> and she also tindered over there. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's another story. <laughs> okay. Tinder overseas. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> my pick this week is going to go to my baby's new shoes. Oh my god! Yes. Yeah. My gosh. They're the cutest. Did you see the ones that he put on yesterday? Sorry, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was dying. <laughs> Whatever. So I okay. So I have been looking for a cute pair of shoes for my baby for a while. Right. Because. Like Moe's baby, he's got really wide feet. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, like, if you want to put him on sneakers, like the Vans or, like, mm -hmm. certain brands of shoes are cute for adults. Right. But when it comes to, like, a 13-month-old, mm -hmm. I didn't feel like they were as no. comfortable or as efficient. Right. So um, I tried some Petty Pets, and I loved them, some Robies, and I really like them. But the design, I was not, like crazy about the design yeah do you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah. like I the feel choices like, are limited at that age. right right like they had robies and petty For, to have like cute and like cute and comfortable efficient, and efficient comfortable, yeah, yeah efficient and cute yeah And I have been in the hunt for shoes forever. I've been looking on Instagram. I've been like looking for everywhere, like hashtag cute baby shoes, like just like <laughs> that are not and, and two that are not like $60, right? Because right? I am not going to spend $60 on my baby. I don't even spend $60 on my shoes. So I found these shoes and their brand is called Levy and Luca. Mm -hmm. And you guys, they are the cutest shoes For for and and they have for girls, right? Yeah, um, for kids. Because sometimes like it's easy to find for girls, but like for boys isn't as like mm -hmm. our options are limit lim limited. <laughs> and I got him uh, two. I got him the Captain Close Toe Sandal. That's one. The one that has like a close toe sandal. How cute is that one? Those that are so cute. And then the other one that I got him were the Livy and Luca Grip sneakers. Oh my gosh. I love them. Like, and he's going to be a wa uh, walker soon. Yeah, so soon. He's gonna yeah, so he actually needs, like, yeah, yeah the and support. It's a poor. And even him, like, I, I, I love them. Like, mm -hmm. I, I have actually seen a difference of him, like, standing more and, like, mm -hmm. actually a little bit more, like, just, Yeah, because like, they need the full support all around all their feet. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. like, I, I feel like so, in some other shoes, like, It, I, I'm like I should have gone these shoes earlier mm -hmm. because he's like standing up and you know they're not as they're not they're perfect for him right. and I just want to give a shout out I, so I found them on Amazon I was just like looking and looking <laughs> I have been looking for shoes for so long and then somehow these came on my Amazon feed I'm like oh my god um, and they were like in the high 20s Oh, they're high twenties, low high twenties, mm. low thirties. I did see the girls, and they're a little bit more expensive. But I, oh, you know, boys' shoes are always che a little cheaper. Yeah, they mm. were like in the As high twenties, low thirties, high twenties, oh. low thirties. That's where I got them from. And then I was from like, Amazon. From Amazon. Oh, nice. I got them from Amazon. So, Levy and Luca, I will post these on our show notes on our website, supermamaspodcast dot com, and our Instagram at underscore supermamas, and also on our Facebook, supermamaspodcast. 
Um, also, you can check out our website, www.supermamaspodcast.com. And there is a link there to our closed group, which is getting bigger and bigger by the day. I know. I can't even keep up with them anymore. <laughs> I know. I'm like, what? Wait, wait, wait. Well, you're more on Facebook than I am. So you're kind of like the moderator <laughs> of all of us. But um, I told I told one of our friends, I was like, maybe you should help us be a moderator. She's like, I don't know. What is that? What is that? But it sounds, it sounds important. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, yeah. I mean, yeah. there's like, it's getting, it's awesome. Like, I, it I, I can't believe it. I'm like, oh, my God god i love seeing like people that don't even know each other and just helping each other and yeah. giving encouragement to each other mm -hmm. and just it's great it's great dita's on the close group yeah yeah i am <laughs> the <laughs> other day I, I turned off the notifications <laughs> because it was just like popping up every like hour i'm like oh my god i, I can't contribute like to this i don't know i don't know what to use for these like for these problems like, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> well, um, maybe if you were around your nieces and nephew more often. Oh my gosh! <laughs> she I helped am. me out. She yeah. totally helped me out no, that she one did. time. She, she totally did. came yeah. through. No, she me. stayed with uh, she stayed with Sabina too, and 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 she I was like, "That was easy." School. And yes, they're gonna have yeah, a meet and greet kidding. at our Super Mama social. She's gonna have a booth there. Which we're gonna have a <laughs> kissing booth, a meet and greet. Oh yeah, you're gonna have a meet and greet <laughs> sponsored <laughs> by Tinder. <laughs> It, your your uh, meet and greet is gonna be from two to two thirty. If anybody <laughs> wants to get in her autograph, a picture signed with my little sister, you guys get your Super Mama Social tickets. SuperMamaSocial.com. SuperMamaSocial.com. Just go in there, buy ticket links. We're gonna start promoting heavily. Right. We already have a bunch of vendors. La Libreria is gonna be there. Little Libros. Little Libros is gonna be there. Viva los cupcakes. Viva los cupcakes hey. is gonna be there. What's this Mexico gonna be Collective. Mexico Collective. We're going to have Lily Love, who you all heard last mm -hmm. week. She's going to be in our panel. Roxy Limon is going to be in our panel. Patty, Patty Rodriguez is going to be in our panel. I mean, like, we're going to have all the Super Mama guests that have been on the show are all going to be there. It's going to be a day of just fun. We're going to have arts and crafts. We are. My girlfriend, Lisette, is mm -hmm. actually going to... Lisette mm -hmm. Amaya, she's like one of the she's best a, artists. She's the one that did your mural. She's. Yeah. She also collaborated. Yeah, she did the mural in my uh -huh. in my baby's nursery. And, in, and she collaborated. And she collaborated the mural here at the restaurant she is going to be hosting the arts and crafts area for the kids so you guys you 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 really can get a better deal right. 15 dollars tickets early bird um get your tickets now through my social.com and we will see you there any last words tits <laughs> asap asap tits chilies chilies Ch chill chill pill just <laughs> just relax and chill <laughs> 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 that should have been your tip of the week. Just chill. Just chill. Say, say how you tell mom. How do you say it with mom? I mostly I just tell mom and, and dad. Well, mom. Just like chill. <laughs> mom. Just smile for my Snapchat, mom. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. You guys, follow uh, Alyssa on Snapchat mom. to see my parents oh on my God. in action. <laughs> oh, I'm so sad that they're back in Mexico yeah. now because now. Oh, wait. There's going to be a Mexico edition. Oh, oh yeah. 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 She's going to Mexico. She's going to Mexico. So follow her on her snap at Liz, Liz A. A. It's like L I triple Z underscore A triple Y. I made it really complicated. <laughs> <laughs> also follow my sister on her Snapchat. Uh, Pow Dad Love. And me, <laughs> just Brisa Lopez. All right, ladies. Paulina Lopez was taken. Super Paulina Mamas, taken. we're out. <laughs> we are out. Bye. Bye, bye. bye ladies. Super Mamas. Beyonce.